Hi friends, the information from the sensors is available. The information available from the sensor is in the electrical form and uh, this electrical form of data is called a signal. So first uh, thing we need to do before transmitting data is uh, to convert it into uh, an electromagnetic signal. So a signal is defined as any physical quantity that varies with time, space or any other independent variable. By signal, it is meant any variable that carries some information. Broadly, the signals may be two types, uh, continuous signal or a discrete signal, a sequence of a train of impulses we have. So, what's a signal? The simplest form of a signal is a direct current and that is switched on or off. So, when we are uh, talking about data, then this data may be converted into a binary form or the value of the data is written in the binary form and this binary zeros and ones can be converted into electrical signal using a DC and a switch. When the switch is on, current flows. When the switch is off, current does not flow and that's a basic concept used in early telegraph. Later, complex signals like alternating current or electromagnetic carriers containing one or more data streams came into existence. So that's what uh, the telegraphy, that's uh, communication, long distance communication began. Here, the, each alphabet is given a code, for example, A is a dot followed by a dash. Dot means a small one, dash is a longer one. And this dot and dash arrangements, whatever is shown here, is the Morse code. This uh, Morse code is used for uh, transmitting the data. So if we want to transmit uh, say B, then we will be sending one dash followed by three dots. So how to make a data, dash and a dot? Yeah, that's used uh, by this uh, instrument, a switching instrument. And when we press the lever, the uh, circuit gets uh, closed and the current starts flowing and the duration for which the lever is pressed decides how long the current will flow. If you press this for a shorter period, then it is equal to saying we are transmitting a dot. If it is for a longer period, we say it is a dash. So on the other side, uh, there is a speaker system which uh, keeps uh, sounding. So if we listen a short sound, we mark it a dot. If we listen a longer sound, we mark it a dash. And using dash and dot combinations, the script is written and transmitted uh, using the switch. And then on the other side, it is heard through the speaker. If it makes small, uh, shorter uh, sound, it is a dot, logger sound is a dash. So the operator is listening and up accordingly dot and dash are marked. So the figure here shows that a dot is for a short duration, the switch is closed and dash is switch is closed for a longer duration. And that's a Morse code for A to Z. And that was a 
the best way of communication the beginning for a longer distance then came the radio telegraphy wherein the switch is replaced with a signal so when we are trying to say one we send some signal when you are trying to say zero we send some other signal and that is transmitted on on the receiver side it is received and again demodulated we get back the telegraph signal so here modulation and demodulation are used for uh, transmitting and receiving respectively now the difference between data and signal data must be transformed into electromagnetic signals prior to transmission yes that's what we discussed so the data or signals can be either analog or digital signal is a periodic if it consists of a continuously repeating pattern here is an example for a analog signal and digital signal so analog signal is a continuously changing signal whereas a digital signal is one which suddenly shifts from one level to other level and because of this sudden shift uh, we want the thing to change from one level to other level in zero time that means anything you want to make it in zero time that means has to be done infinitely fast so the frequency required for uh, digital signals will be infinite whereas frequency of the signal required for analog is limited so analog signals are band limited and whereas digital signal need infinite bandwidth and that's one problem we have while communicating digital signals data is uh, zeros and ones so it will be uh, rectangular uh, shape zeros and ones are being transmitted and uh, then when it is converted to signal it becomes uh, something rectangular waves and uh, that needs an infinite bandwidth so various uh, data signals combinations if you look at it the, if the input data is analog form and output is analog form it is our well known telephone system where we speak whatever we speak is in analog form because uh, whatever we are speaking is uh, disturbing the atmosphere and the uh, air gets uh, this uh, vibrations and these vibrations reach the microphone of the telephone microphone gets uh, the vibrations and that is sensed and that is transferred through wire and it reaches on the other end and the reverse process is done there at the receiving side the electric uh, variations are converted back to acoustic variations which the listener can hear it the second form is uh, the input is digital whereas output is analog that's where modem comes into picture and this is essential because uh, digital data as we just uh, looked earlier has got an infinite bandwidth because the digital data when you show it in the electrical form then it will change a value from one value to other value in zero time so zero time means the bandwidth will be infinite which is a little impossible to use the physical network to transmit so we need to band limit so for that uh, we convert digital data into analog signal using a modem or we can uh, do the other way analog data can be converted into a digital signal using codec so that's a uh, analog to digital converter the other one is uh, so here the data is in analog form so it uh, continuously varies and its equivalent digital signal is made available through codec 
And finally, we have digital input and digital signal and that is a digital transmitter we are talking. As we just discussed, uh, digital signal directly cannot be transmitted through the physical system because no physical system can offer to uh, allow the infinite bandwidth. So each uh, media is uh, having a limited bandwidth. So we need to ensure that our signals are also of limited bandwidth. So how to uh, limit the bandwidth? So the best way is to use a shift keying concept. Basically, we have three types of uh, shift keying. One is uh, amplitude shift keying, wherein we transmit a sinusoidal of a known frequency whenever we want to say one and we don't transmit anything whenever we want to say a zero. So the first uh, figure shows that uh, whenever there is a one, we have a, some cycle of sinusoidal and when you want to say zero, there is no sinusoidal. Same repeats. But the problem with this type of uh, shift keying is that uh, if the connection is lost between transmitter and the receiver, then the receiving side does not receive any signal. And uh, as the protocol was decided that if nothing is received, it means a zero. So if there is any disturbance in the connection or if the connection is lost, the receiver does not get anything. Therefore, the, there is possibility that the receiver may take that the thing is coming as a zero. So when the network is disturbed, the receiver keeps reading zero, 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 and that's going to create a disaster. So we want to make sure that we need to differentiate between a zero and disturbance in the transmission system or the channel. If there is a disconnection, we should be able to understand that it is disconnected, it is not a zero. Then what we need to do is we need to represent zero by another signal. So now we need two signals. So that uh, can be of two different frequencies, then we call it frequency shift keying. So for one, we transmit a high frequency signal and for zero, we transmit a low frequency signal or vice versa, anything you like, you can use it. Make sure that the protocol is defined correctly so that the transmitter receiver understand what exactly to be transmitted, what exactly is to be read. In the frequency shift keying, what happens is so we transmit uh, one frequency for one, other frequency for zero. And uh, definitely, if there is a disconnection between transmitter and receiver, neither first frequency is received nor second frequency is received. Therefore, definitely there is no chance of getting confused as a zero or one. Because to say zero, you need a signal. To say a one, you need a signal and these two signals have to be distinct so that you can differentiate them either as zero or one. So that's a frequency shift keying. What the problem with frequency shift keying is we do require two frequencies and uh, at the transmission side, we need two frequencies to be generated and on the receiving side, we need to accurately differentiate between the two frequencies and that's going to be little person to identify whether it is first frequency or second frequency. So it's become a little complicated uh, structure to identify that. So the better way would be just to, instead of uh, changing the frequency, we can just change the phase. So we can send a zero degree phase of uh, a signal for a one and 180 degree out of phase for a zero or vice versa. So now we need, we require only one frequency to be received or transmitted. But only thing is either you have to transmit direct signal 
or inverted signal. On the other side, you just have to verify whether you are getting in phase or out of phase. If you get in phase, it's called a one in this case. If you are getting an out of phase signal, then it is called a zero. So in phase, out of phase can be used to differentiate these signals. So once we are uh, into phase, then a big whole world opens up instead of having two things. We can have four phases. So you can uh, distribute 360 degree into four parts, 90, 90, 90, 90 apart. Then, so you can transmit uh, one of the four. So one of the four means you can now think of transmitting two bits at a time. Same way if you can uh, use three bits at a time, that means you need to have one out of eight. That means you need uh, eight different phases, which we call 8 PSK and uh, for two at a time what we call is quadrature phase shift key in QPSK then 8 PSK, 16 PSK, 32 PSK, 64 PSK are possible if we can accurately differentiate between change in the phases then simultaneously more than one bit can be transmitted. So that's a other way of uh, looking at it. So we have a digital data, so 1010 zero, zero to be transmitted and we use a carrier. And uh, if it is ASK, then we transmit the carrier. If it is not, if it is a zero, then we don't transmit. For one, we transmit. So that's how the ASK signal looks like. For FSK, we do require two frequencies and for PSK, we require one frequency but change the phase. So that's the big communication world opens up when you get into shift keying. That's a, a must because we need to make sure that our signal is band limited so that it can be accommodated into any channel. So that's it uh, about uh, converting analog, digital, digital, analog, transmitting digital signals and all that. Thank you.